So by this point, you've probably heard of Discord chat services and they're great, they're awesome. They do a lot of really cool things. But the problem is that um, you're on somebody else's service. So if they ever go away, then you've got to figure out how to migrate away from them, how to take all of your information, your users, then you've got to tell everybody, hey, I'm on this new service. And sometimes that can get tedious. So what I want to do today is actually show you how to set up your own uh, Discord-esque uh, chat service that you can run. Uh, only costs you probably a few bucks a month if you use uh, something like DigitalOcean. Um, and it only takes a few minutes to set up. But before we jump over to uh, my desktop, there's a couple of things that I need to get out of the way first. Uh, one, you'll probably want your own domain name for this, something uh, something that's unique to you, uh, something that you've got full control over so that you can make changes to the domain name settings. You'll definitely need that. Um, you'll also need a service like DigitalOcean, and I specify DigitalOcean because that's who we're gonna use here. If you use a different service, I can't help you. I don't know uh, what will work and what won't on different services, but I know for a fact that this will work on DigitalOcean because I've done it about 10 times this morning uh, while I was prepping for this tutorial. The third thing that you'll need is something like uh, an app like Putty. Uh, Putty is um, an SSH app uh, that gives you command line access to a server once you're logged in. Uh, you will need that as well in order to run the commands on the server through DigitalOcean. So I think that covers everything that we need to cover to get set up for this. Also, I encourage you to go down to the description. I will have all of the steps listed out there as well. Because YouTube is notorious for truncating things strangely, I will also have this as a link over on uh, my blog so you can get the full list of instructions there if YouTube does something stupid and truncates anything here. So you need a domain name, you need your digital ocean, you need putty. Um, you need to look at the description to get all this information. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop and jump into this whole tutorial. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, like I said, we're gonna do all of this on DigitalOcean. You can see I've already got an account created here and we are logged in. Uh, so the next thing that we'll wanna do probably is create a new project. And we can do that by clicking up here at the top left. And we're gonna call this a uh, chat server. Um, and then um, we'll just say, um, a web application as far as what it's for. And the, the description is just for you and teammates, things like that. Um, you can put that in if you want. Uh, I'm gonna skip it for right now. Uh, next thing is we'll click, go ahead and uh, click uh, create project here. And then we're gonna skip moving resources. We don't need to do any of that. Cool, so the next thing we need to do is set up a droplet. Um, that's that's what they call their, their instances here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on uh, get started with a droplet. And we're gonna do this on uh, Ubuntu 18.04.2, 64-bit. Uh, um, the 64-bit's irrelevant, but we are gonna do this on Ubuntu 18.04. So we'll go ahead and click that. A starter plan is fine for us. Uh, for the sake of this, I am just gonna use a, a ch their cheapest plan here. Uh, if you plan on having a lot of people and things like that on your server, uh, you may wanna bump that up um, to, a, to a higher platform with more RAM and more CPU cores, things like that. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to use uh, their cheap $5 a month uh, plan here. So um, right now, again, you can enable backups if you'd like. I don't know how important backups will be for chat, um, but you can turn that on if you want. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, block storage, we're not gonna worry too much about. Um, the data center region, uh, I would choose something that is close um, to you, I guess, or, or to where most of your users are going to be. Uh, I'm gonna choose San Francisco. Uh, I'm closer to the West Coast than the East Coast. So we'll go ahead and select San Francisco there. Um, the additional options, we're just gonna skip. Uh, the SSH keys, we're going to skip. Um, we're just gonna create one droplet here and we're gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call it uh, chat, oops. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and click create. So now this is gonna go through a bit of a process for the setup and that sort of thing. Um, while it's doing that, or once it's done doing that, uh, you will end up getting an email from, uh, from DigitalOcean um, with all of the credentials that you're going to need. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and wait for this to finish up and then we'll go ahead and jump into that part. Okay, so here is that email and um, and I'm just gonna go through this email so you can kind of understand what's going on here. Um, 
this <laughs> this will not apply uh, once this video is up. None of this will work. Um, but this is what that email will look like. It'll have your droplet name. It's gonna have the IP address. We're gonna need that uh, for a couple of other steps later uh, when we configure the domain name as well as logging into the server to do the things that we need to do. So we will need that IP address. Um, your username will always be root when you're dealing with DigitalOcean, unless you create additional users, but that's way outside the scope of what we're doing in this video. And of course the password is there. Um, again, none of this is gonna matter. That's why I'm showing it. Um, so basically that's what we need to get started. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna grab this IP address. And the first thing that I wanna do is actually go over and assign uh, this IP address to the domain name at uh, the, the domain name level. Um, if you go through like GoDaddy or, or HostGator or whoever you use to purchase your domain names, this process will be a little different as far as how you get there. Um, but the overall uh, idea is the same. Um, in that um, for, you'll set up an A record, which is right here. Um, it may be on something different. It may be on uh, like TXT or MX, or you may, you'll, you'll want to look for one of these, um, but we want to set up an A record. And in that A record, the, the name of it is going to be at, and that'll just be an all encompassing. It's just going to grab the domain name and drop it in there for us. So we just put an at symbol there. And right over here where it says IPv4 address, that's where we're gonna put in the IP address that we got from this email. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, click on that. Uh, I'm gonna undo that just for right now. Uh, you'll, you won't have to worry about that unless you're using Cloudflare, um, but I'm just gonna turn that off for right now. And then we'll go ahead and click add record. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes um, domain propagation or attaching a domain name to an IP address, sometimes that can take a long time, sometimes up to 24 hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up. Now, uh, I've, I've, I've gone through this process a few times already. Uh, so with Cloudflare, it'll go much, much faster, um, but I just wanna get that part out of the way. The next thing that we need to do here is actually open up a program called Putty. And Putty is just an SSH um, application um, so I'll go ahead and I'll paste in that IP address. Uh, we're gonna leave it on port 22, that's fine. Um, and it's saying, hey, this host key uh, isn't cached in the registry, do you, do you trust it? The answer is yes, um, it's brand new. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just accept that. Again, the, the login, it's asking for the, the username. That's gonna be a root like we talked about a minute ago. Now, the next thing we need here is the password. And if we come over here and we just copy that, we can come back to Putty like this, and we can actually just right click um, on our mouse. We don't have to hit Control V. We don't have to type in this, this nonsense. We can just right click and nothing happened. Uh, at least nothing happened that we can see. It really did paste that in there though. So if I click enter on my keyboard, um, it's gonna say, cool, you're logged in, uh, but now we need you to change your password. So what is your current password? That's what it's asking for right here. So we're just gonna right click again and then we'll click enter. So it accepted that. Now we want a new password, something that we can remember, uh, but, but something that's not gonna be, good God. I don't even know if you can hear that nasty loud motorcycle just went by. Anyway, so now we need to type in a password that we can remember that won't be easily hacked. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a password. Oops, let's try that again. And then it's gonna ask us to type that in again, just to make sure we got it right, because we can't see it. And cool, now we're logged in. Now we've got root access to our server, and now we're gonna run a few commands. And I'll kind of run you through some of this. Now, there may be other ways to do this. There may be uh, other ways to install uh, this chat service that we're gonna use called Rocket Chat. Um, but this is really the easiest way I've ever run into uh, installing anything. It's like right up there with Docker. Um, so what we're gonna do is I've got um, a list of commands down here. I'm just gonna paste this in here. And it's saying sudo snap install uh, Rocket Chat server. Um, sudo is saying hey give me root access snap is is an install method uh or, or a way to install things and we're just telling it hey install rocket chat server so we'll just go ahead and click enter and it's going to think about it for a minute now it's going to connect to uh the 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 server where we're going to download all these files remotely so now it's going through this process and this will take just a little bit of time not very long at all 
So now it's it's going through its process of installing and, and doing the things it needs to do to work. Cool, so now it's installed. And while that's great, um, we could run it as, um, you know, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, in this case, um, uh, dbtech.design. But for security purposes, uh, we wanna run this on an SSL. So that's where we get the HTTPS. It adds a, bit, a layer of security and encryption, that sort of thing. So we're gonna do something very, very similar here. And we're just gonna uh, right click here uh, to paste in this other command. Again, we're asking for root privileges here. And this, again, that's that snap. And we're telling it to set the rocket chat server caddy URL. And caddy has to do with the SSL portion of things. Um, so we're telling snap to set the server caddy URL to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash dbtech.design. So we'll go ahead and click enter. And that's done. So now we've got another command here and we wanna go ahead and say, again, asking for root privileges here. We're gonna say snap set rocket chat server. We wanna enable this SSL portion of things. That's that caddy equals enable. So we'll go ahead and click enter again, and that's done. So this is the next level of um, enabling HTTPS. Again, it's all the same pseudo snap set rocket jet server, um, but this time it's gonna be HTTPS enable. And we'll go ahead and click enter, and it's gonna think, and now that's done. And one last here um, is pseudo rocket chat server. We're going to initialize caddy. That means we're gonna start that service. And we're gonna go ahead and click enter. Now, as long as you don't get any error messages here, we can move on. If you get an error message, it'll tell you what it is, and then you can Google how to do that. Um, we're not gonna get into any of that troubleshooting stuff. This worked, so we're just gonna go on to the next thing, and we're going to uh, restart the Rocket Chat uh, service here. And then the next thing that we need to do is restart the caddy service. And that's, again, where we're telling it to restart Snap Rocket Chat server, Rocket Chat caddy service. So once we've got that, we can go ahead and click enter. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually uh, come back over to here. We're gonna grab this. Oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. We're gonna copy that, that's what I meant to do. Um, and then we're gonna come back to DigitalOcean. We've got um, our chat instance that we've got here. We're gonna click on add a domain. And we're gonna say uh, dbtech.design. And then we're going to close out of this. We're gonna go ahead and say yes, use that chat server. We'll go ahead and click on add domain. Here again, we're gonna click at, we're gonna uh, do this at host name. And then we're gonna paste in that IP address. And then we're gonna click on create record. Now, if everything, oops, we're going to just click on that. If everything worked correctly, there we go. Now we're in the setup wizard, and then we can go through this process of setting up um, our uh, our admin account to start with. So uh, my name is David. Uh, if you didn't know that, uh, my name's David. Good to meet you. Uh, my username, I'm going to say is dbtech. Uh, I'm going to do david at dbtechreviews.com. Also, that email address, that's a real email address. Don't email me there asking for support. Um, it, it'll get you blocked. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and click continue there. Now the organization info here, I'll say not now. Uh, we are, let's say a community. And we'll go ahead and say uh, DB Tech. Um, the industry, uh, of course, you can make this anything you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come down here to media, sure, why not? Um, there's only one of me. Uh, we are worldwide and we're gonna say HTTPS. This is important. This has to do with the website settings themselves. So what you wanna do is actually type in or copy and paste the URL of the site and click continue. Now the site name will say uh, DB Tech Chat. Language will be default, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna have a, pri or a public community rather and we'll click continue. Um, this will allow people to register uh, for, uh, for the site. Um, and we'll go ahead and click on continue. So now we can go ahead and click on go to your workspace. And here we can, uh, we've got a general chat room here um, and we can say uh, hello. 
Um, and that's that's all there is to it. So you could go through all this administration stuff that's up here, um, but that's way outside the scope of this video. I just wanted to show how to, uh, how to set up Rocket Chat for your own personal chat server. So there's one thing that I wanted to mention that I spaced until I was editing this video and realized I hadn't mentioned it. And that is that there are Android and iOS apps. Like for instance, oops, let's get logged in there. That's wrong way. This is, um, there we go. This is the app on my phone. Uh, this is a, a rocket.chat app that you can download uh, from, oops. Yeah, there we go. So that is an app that you can download for Android or iOS so that you can have this stuff on the go as well. So meant to mention that and completely spaced it. Um, just know that it is there. So there you go. Uh, like I said, pretty simple process. There are manual ways of doing this. There, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I found that Snap is the easiest, most efficient way to get all of this set up. Um, so hopefully uh, you found the video helpful. If you did, uh, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would really help me out a bunch. Um, if you want to help support the channel, I've got a link down in the description as well, uh, where you can find uh, a link over to a support.dbtech uh, website where you can find links to like my Amazon and uh, Patreon and coffee and all kinds of different places where you can support the channel as well. But I think that is going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.